at any point throughout your journey, did you ever believe or even consider that death could occur? I think of that every day. Every day. I think of this could be it or this could be the start of it. Because my heart, what they did was they did a double bypass on a single artery because he was saying the block was not because of your diet. It's because of the diabetes. It happens to diabetics. Interesting. So if you have a double bypass, if one gets blocked again, at least you have one more. Mm -hmm. But there's no telling, you know. I mean, I'm just trusting God that, you know, this heartbeat will keep on beating until the day he says enough. If I am being honest with myself, I don't think I ever truly considered that I would die. I knew it was a reality. Mm. I knew that it was a possibility. A friend of mine a long time ago, maybe over 30 years ago, did tell me that, Gary, safety is not in the absence of danger. It's being in the presence of God. It was in this experience that, that I felt that. The first time when I was about to be rolled in for the bypass, mm -hmm. and I was saying goodbye to Paolo, Gab, and Kiana. They came up to me, hey, Dad, love you, Dad. When you're hearing these things, and then you, your mind goes, yeah, but what if you don't make it out, you know? Yeah. So that's when I would entertain the thought of, okay, but through that entire experience, that's where I found myself eh? in his hands. He kept reminding me, I got you. Yeah, but what if after everything I'm told, I can't sing, I can't dance anymore because I got you. This is where you're safe. You're safe with me. The second time I was being rolled in for the kidney, it was the same room. In fact, it was white like this. All the curtains were white. My mind was like, am I in heaven? <laughs> It's like, no, this is a prelude to what it's going to be like there. At least, but, at least I made it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm human when I talk to the Lord. Okay? I don't try yeah. and come to Him and go, oh, hallelujah, and, and try to be who I am not. Yeah. So I was very transparent with Him at that time, saying, I'm here again. Wasn't this enough? Isn't the diabetes enough? Now, cancer? And it was like I felt the presence in that white place it's like he sat down at the foot of my bed and he looked at me and he goes yeah i know you're here again but so am i oh there was just that peace that yeah. came upon me so there i was and it happened and i'll never forget the closest to death that i felt was when they woke me up to see if i was okay because i was intubated okay so i had that thing down my throat and when i woke up they woke me up, Gary. All the voices started fading in. Are you okay, Gary? So, are you okay? Oh, he's waking up. He's waking up. And I woke up. And I could not breathe. And I really felt, this is it. <laughs> this must be what it feels like when you're struggling between life and death. Then he said, breathe, breathe. Open up. <gasps> Take a deep breath through your mouth. <sighs> and then everything just faded away and I went to bed. That's the closest I came to death. When you were going through these hardships, did you at any point ever question your faith or, or get upset with God and kind of think like, why would you put me through this? Did you ever get like that? That happens many times between me and God. There are times that I do question not His being God, Mm -hmm. But I do question him like a son would question a dad. Yeah. I've been praying about it. We've been praying that my diabetes would be healed. But the diabetes has been there for so many decades now. Why? No answers. But there's peace. There's always peace that comes upon me that says, yeah, you have the diabetes, but look at how many people are inspired by the fact that you're not even supposed to be alive and you are. And still, you give glory to me, not because you're showing people, but because, Gary, I know that's what's in your heart. There are times that I do question, as any normal person would. And, and I know a lot of people would probably say, huh, what, why is God, you're never supposed to question God. No, it's, I'm not questioning who are you. Mine is simple questions like, when? Maybe tomorrow you think it can happen? Why and all? But no questions that would lessen my faith or weaken my faith in Him. Because in far greater ways, He does things that I 
don't even deserve, that I don't even, that I, I never asked for, and still. I'll give you a simple example. During the pandemic, there were only two things that I think people could really do. That was either to go bike, or to walk, or to play golf. And there I was biking. And I decided one day, while this heartbeat can still pump, let me try biking from Antipolo, and let me see how far I can go. So I went all the way to Calatagan in Batangas. And for me to see the arch that said, Welcome to Calatagan, I was in tears, Will. After everything I've gone through, I'm still able to do this? Wow, this, uh, I can't believe it. And I was strong enough to keep on going. I kept, and I got, I ended up there. And then a few weeks later, I did it again. To other bikers, it might not seem that long. But for somebody who's gone through so much, oh yeah. That's, that's like an accomplishment for me. And, and it's like God knew on a very personal level, this is what's going to make my son happy. Okay, Gary, I'll be with you all the way. And I felt his presence all the way. And it was just me. Then we ended up, my assistant and my driver, we ended up in the beach. And I'm there and I'm saying, hey, kain tayo. And we were eating there and I'm just looking and I'm saying, then I go back into the car and I drive home and I'm looking at the road I just passed and I'm like, I did that? That's just one example. Then the things we take, not for granted, but when I see my children, Paolo directing Ben and Ben and Eraser Heads and the concert of Sarah Geronimo that's coming up and, yeah. and the good feedback I'm hearing from people, not because he's my son, yeah. but these were just experiences that people have with him. And then Gabriel, who's gone through so much, now he has a chance to open door in the United States to be a creative director of a television station. I'm like, oh, go for it. Kiana, who's also been through so much. When I see these things, Will, these are blessings that I don't feel I've ever deserved. Yeah. And yet, here. So you have the diabetes, you had cancer, you had this, you had it. But here is what I've given you. And there's more that's coming. So I'm just waiting for those moments to come. Um, and even if there's nothing more that's given, even if I'm going to continue with what I already have, then so be it. Because that means these are things that are powerful enough to create an impact for generations to come. You really live um, with a different type of gratefulness that didn't exist before that. And in my mind, I'm, I'm reliving it. When you're talking about your biking story, I had a very similar you running did? story. Running. It gives me chills, man. Even that you said like being in the white room and everything's yeah. white. It's like, I have these montages in the back of my head that are so vivid, they never go away. I remember consciously dreaming, like being alive and, and, and wishing that one day I'll, I'll be able to just like run. Got you. If you liked what you saw and you want to listen to the full episode, then download Spotify and follow us at Superhuman with Will Dasevich. It's completely free, it's linked below and easy to use.